Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Most good believers do not know how to activate their angels because of wrong, false, or religious teaching. Demons who should be losing are taking advantage of this lack of knowledge and prematurely aborting believers' destinies, or worse. This changes today. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are our most important guest. My guest here, though, is Joseph C. He just wrote a new book teaching secrets about activating the unseen and angelic world to fight on your behalf. Few even realize the truths simply stated in this book. Angels are our servants of fire, but they only respond, and get this, they only respond through human voice activation and by you only speaking God's words. Joseph, you say angels are voice activated? Oh, that's right. God has put in his word how things operate. There's a kingdom, there's principles. Angels are activated by the voice of God their voice activated, not by our voice, by his voice. And so a better way to say this is Psalm 29. It says that angels are divided or the flames of fire are divided by the voice of God. That means when they go out and rank and file and they're doing what they're supposed to do, it is God that commands them to go. Now, the unique part is when we take the word of God, his written word, we put it in our mouth, we speak it out in faith, in prayer. I'll tell you, angels hear that and they snap to attention, Sid, and they get work done that way. And also, we don't know where angels come from entirely. The Bible doesn't really say, but we know our God is a consuming fire, Sid, and they are flames of fire, fiery servants to the heirs of salvation. I believe that voice of God, that, that pros looking into the face of the Father, when Jesus is the Word made flesh and God is speaking out His Word through the Son, I believe angels, they just activate with that. When we put the voice of God in us and speak the Word, those flames of fire that come right out of the very presence of God, I believe, just act and do exactly what they were designed for, to serve uh, heirs of salvation, you and I. They go get the job done. Joseph. Tell me about the very first time you remember in which you encountered an angel. Oh, my goodness, Sid. I, I got a few of these, but one in particular. I was a younger minister, and I was uh, in the moment casting out a demon. I had a witch, and we're in this, uh, this setting, and a few of us are in there, and we're trying to cast this demon out, trying to cast it out. And this thing is going full Hollywood on us, <laughs> demonstrative. <laughs> it's like a young lady. She started to speak with the voice of a trucker. I'll get you, you know. <laughs> and, and we're going through this scenario, and I just I, I began to call in the name of the Lord. I began to try to bind this thing, and suddenly the Word of God came alive in me. Because at that time, I'd been going through the whole New Testament like once a week, reading it, listening to it. And I began to quote like Psalm 91. I began to quote different scriptures. And suddenly when I said, the angels take charge concerning me and this girl, and I took authority, this witch got starfish to the ground. It looked like somebody Velcroed her to the ground. Bam! She's laying there. She's like, mm. And suddenly, the demon screamed out of her. She couldn't move. She couldn't do anything. And previous to that, she was attacking us, Sid. And she got delivered because I believe angels interfered with those nefarious plans. Now, when you saw the power of the Word of God against the demonic, yeah. did this open you up to have more faith when you pray for deliverance? Oh, big time. Deliverance, healing, any of it. And I'll tell you, Sid, I, angels seem to gravitate to the obedient, to the, the Word of God. And I was in one setting. I left a, a restaurant. I walk outside of this restaurant. There was a man sitting on the curb. I looked at him and I said, hey, um, or the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me as I was looking at him and said, you need to give that man everything in your wallet. 
you know, being the Holy Ghost man I was, I left. <laughs> I, I was like, hey, I don't know if I want to do that. That must be the devil. Yeah. That can't be God. <laughs> so I, I get in the car, I drive away, but I sense the conviction of the Spirit. Go back, go back. So my wife, Heather, and I, we went back. And I walked up to this man. He's sitting on the curb. I emptied my wallet, gave, gave it to him. And he was a very handsome African-American man. And he stood up when this happened, Sid. And he began to laugh. And then he looked at me and said, your father is so pleased with you. You're going to have a ministry. You will go around the world. These things will begin to happen. And, and maybe it's my mind's eye, but he seemed like he was like seven feet tall, Sid. And he starts hugging me. He had big dreadlocks. And it was a profound moment. I believe it was an angel. Because when we left, I look back as the stories go, and he was gone. It was a tremendous experience. Now, tell me about the storm, Angel. Oh, my goodness. We were at a conference. We're at this prophetic conference enjoying things, my wife and I, a few friends. And as we're driving back, we're going down the freeway, and we suddenly came into a storm cell, like a wall of water. And when this is happening, I'm looking around, and it seemed like we drove into a tornado. It was that intense, just intense wind, intense rain. And then it was like, there was lightning and everything taking place all at the same time. And suddenly we call out to Jesus, the storm is happening, and boom, we're on this side of the storm. We blast it out of the storm. And I know for a fact there was angelic intervention. You just, you could sense it, and suddenly we were one place, and then we were in another. We'd plowed right through that storm, and it was powerful for me. It really impacted me when it involves prayer and how we are to call in the name of the Lord. I believe angels are activated when we call out in faith on the name of the Lord. It's really interesting. We're here right now. We're in this setting. Many people are watching. You're listening. And I have a sense of the power of God right here on set during this broadcast. I sense the Holy Spirit is releasing a power for healing in this place. You look directly at the people when you do that. I believe there is many of you watching right now, and I'm talking about angels. We're in the middle of this narrative, and I sense the power of God wanting to touch your life. As a matter of fact, there's somebody, and I began to sense intense pain, like intense pain in your midsection, in your body, almost wanting to double you over, and the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that stops now. That stops right now in the name of Jesus. I release angels according to Psalm 91, Psalm 103, and I send those fiery servants to minister to the heirs of salvation right now. And I command the pain to leave you, anxiety leave you. There is a healing of traumatic stress that's leaving somebody right now over crisis. Sid, the power of God is touching someone right where they are. You're going to feel pain leaving your body I don't have right pain, now. but I feel the power of God Ooh, touching me. <laughs> there is pain right now leaving the body. There's an anointing lifting this off of you. I believe angels are coming into compliance and agreement with this word. Cancer, you leave them right now. You get off their body in Jesus' name. I see a person's eye. You have one eye that is completely, uh, it's deteriorated, and the Spirit of the Lord is bringing wholeness to that, and strength is manifesting in your eye. Angels are backing that up by the word of the Lord, and they are bringing order to that and wholeness to this area of your body. Strength is happening, even here in our studio audience and those of you watching right now. The power of God is being released. An unbeliever is watching this, and healing is entering your body right now. The Lord is proving his presence to you. He is proving that he is Lord, and he's touching you right now. I sense the power of God lifting that off your life. And the Lord is saying, I love you, and I am real. I am real. Hallelujah. Oh, Sid, the power of God. I, I tell you, Joseph C. met, listen to this, the angel for America and the angel for Israel and found out the number one strategy the devil will use to destroy America, totally unknown by our government. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. We've found over a thousand planets outside our solar system just in the last 20 years. There are at least 100 billion stars in the Milky Way alone, and at least 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. There are more stars than grains of sand on all Earth's beaches combined. Up to 4,800 stars are born every second. 
There are 86 billion neurons in the average human brain. If you unraveled all the DNA in your body, it would span 34 billion miles, reaching to Pluto, 2.6 billion miles away and back six times. With 60,000 miles of blood vessels inside the average human body, you could circumnavigate Earth two and a half times. Nerve impulses travel to and from the brain at speeds of up to 250 miles per hour, faster than a Formula One race car. If the human brain were a computer, it could perform 38,000 trillion operations per second. The world's most powerful supercomputer can only manage 0.002% of that. Is all this creation a random coincidence? Or was the universe created by design? Is there a creator who has a plan for you? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that answers these questions and many more. Get a free online download of the book. They fought for themselves by logging on to the website theyfoughtforthemselves.com. The constant worry of illness can be crushing. Not knowing what is going to happen, the stress of medical bills, and the discouragement of being unable to do the things you love can be depressing. Healing and faith are mysteries for most people. Sid Roth's ebook contains his personal list of healing scriptures. As you meditate on these promises, you tap into a supernatural portal called the Kingdom of Heaven. Faith and healing will no longer be a mystery. Download your free copy of the Healing Scriptures book at sidroth.org slash healing. We now return to It's Supernatural. I'm here with Joseph C. And what is it about us humans? We like to go to extremes. We do. Angels. Yes. Tell us some extremes to avoid. Well, the extremes that happen, you know, I liken it this way, Sid. The devil couldn't beat the church, so he did the next best thing. He tried to join it. He tried to become part of things. He tried to influence. And then religion tries to come in and label things. And there's this saying that goes, metaphors reign where mysteries reside. And instead of looking at the word of God, what it actually says and how we should function, people have to come up with sensational scenarios and ideas and stories and clouds without water that don't lead to anything. And this happens chronically in the area of angels. When we're talking about angels, we realize they are ministering spirits, fiery servants to the heirs of salvation. A lot of times people say, oh my goodness, they almost get into a point where they worship angels. They take it to such an extreme where every five minutes they're with an angel and angels taking them somewhere. The people have been to heaven, you know, five times per day, which I think is awesome. But I'm from Colorado and many people say, oh, I've been to heaven and today they had brownies up there. And I like to say, what was in those brownies? And, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, being a little bit funny, I believe in the supernatural, I experience it all the time. But we also have to stay in a biblical foundation with these things so we can bring order to it. The extremes are so craving the supernatural that you miss the spirit, so craving the things that are sensational that you miss the real supernatural. And then the other side is people completely dismiss supernatural encounters altogether. They dismiss angels. They dismiss all of it. Those two extremes are both wrong. We need to go into the highway of holiness, the middle ground, which is the word of God. And 1 Corinthians 4, verse 6, it says, learn from us to not go beyond what is written. And we'll never get into error then. And angels will operate properly. And you won't have to worry about angels of light, false entities. Because I think a lot of times, Sid, there's false entities that will appear to people that are so open to anything that they're not in the word of God that angels of light could actually deceive people and they believe they're having some supernatural encounter and they're really getting led down the fairy tale path towards wandering and mis, uh, misled. I believe that the real raw spiritual horsepower that will bring lasting change is when you take the word of God with the spirit and you have order and strength. And that will have lasting change and people will go the distance. You, you just used a word. A lot of people misunderstand the strength of angels. Yeah. Comment. Oh, my goodness. Well, Jesus, you know, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And as he was there, they said, oh, Lord, you know, just basically save yourself was kind of the, the air in the moment. And Jesus said, don't you know I could call on more than 12 legions of angels? And I'm very grateful to my friend Rick Renner who broke this down. He's just a wonderful scholar. But 12 legions of angels is a massive amount of force. 
One legion is like 6,000 of them. And if you put that together, 12 of them is 72,000 angels. If Jesus had called on 72,000 angels, it would have wiped out the planet Earth like several times over. And you find that interesting, the power of angels. Now, just one angel killed like 180-something thousand people in one night alone. So when you understand the, the force and the power behind these entities, man, it is something else. But when we do it by the Word of God, we can really access that. Uh, tell me about the voice you and your wife heard while doing a live video. This was really intense. Uh, this was in 2019, and I, I broadcast every single morning, and I, I go live, I'm, I'm there, and on this particular broadcast, I had done two weeks of teaching on our live broadcast about the very things we're talking about right now, about how to access angels properly through the Word of God. And, and said, in that moment, I finished. Right at the end of the broadcast, I began to feel an anointing. I closed the broadcast out, and I have to tell you, the room changed. And the room began to just shift. Things began to take place. I felt the power of God, a holy reverence and fear of God came in the room like I have never experienced in my life. And then a voice spoke from behind me, and it blasted through my being. And the voice said, I come to you from the very throne of God. And then he said, the great God Jehovah does not need you as much today as he needs you more after the 2020 election. I have great need of you. You're going to go live every single weekday morning, and there's going to be things that oppose you. And he went down, he told me many things, and then said, prepare. You got to prepare your team. You got to stand up, and you got to be ready for what is coming next. Now, you said your wife was in there at the same time. She was. Did she feel what you felt? She felt it. She didn't hear the voice. You know, because I Scripture says some thought an angel had spoke, others thought it thundered, right? Right. I believe that she did not hear anything because we talked about it, but she felt the presence of God and the holy reverence. She was also filled with tears. I was, I was nearly screaming, Sid, because it was so intense. And she was dramatically changed by it also. Did it dramatically change you? It did because the Lord spoke to me through his messenger. He gave me marching orders for the season that was to come. And I thought, wow, the Lord is talking to me about right now. And what an interesting thing to hear. You are not needed as much now, but you will be needed after the 2020 era. And I began to recognize that picture. And then I saw things coming. He told me specific events about individuals that were in my life and how to navigate it. And we did so. And it played out just as the messenger. When you say navigate, there were good people in your life and yes, bad people that's in correct. your life. Okay. That's correct. And he, he warned me about them. He said, here's what you're going to do. And here's how you're going to navigate this. And we did. And it went just like that. And I'll tell you, it was wonderful what took place. And I believe God was preparing us for a future to stand up against some of the coming onslaught of darkness we're facing right now. It's almost like we put our mouth guard in and said, okay, it's prison rules. <laughs> you know? we, we got really serious about it because of that warning and that direction. Now, people are reporting very supernatural things that are happening to them when they read your new book. Yeah. Tell me what that comes to mind. Well, people are reading it, and it's because it's so biblically based. We go to the Bible. I don't tell sensational stories just to tell them. I take it to the Word of God because they get lasting results. One person commented and said, I read your book, and I had my very first trance reading this book. You know, and it's a book that takes us right to the Word of God, tells the stories about angels, but it unlocks something in people the way God intended. You know, it's measurable, it's powerful, and people are having trances, visions, breakthroughs, and I believe we're going to get more and more stories about real angelic encounters that set people free. Well, out of curiosity, was there a story behind the story as to why you wrote that book? It was because of that angelic encounter. Because of that, it's you wanted that. to research. I, yeah, I actually, the publishers came to me and they said, hey, Joseph, why don't you go ahead and just write us a little booklet on angels? And I thought, okay, I'll write you a booklet. I began to put uh, hands to the keyboard, and that book just took off. It just I couldn't stop writing it. I felt the unction of the Holy Spirit asking me to write when, it. When you say you could stop writing it, are you saying you didn't struggle? It just came out like a it prophecy? Came out, yes, it came out. It's a prophetic book, Sid. It came out like a prophecy. I got into the book of Enoch, right-sizing some of the points of view on that. We talked about angels' desire to look into salvation the way we have it. They're curious, I believe. We get into the final chapters of the book where we start showing you how to pray angelic prayers that break you through, meaning scriptural prayers 
that release angels. And I'll tell you, it is a powerful thing that we saw so many people begin to turn and have a solid walk with the Lord regarding the supernatural. Yeah, you know, as you're talking, I'm getting a word of knowledge. And let me tell you what it is. There are people that have problems in their fingers. I saw fingers that perhaps were bent mm. over, straightening out. Yes. Fingers that perhaps have pain from arthritic type conditions being healed instantly. And I also, when I said that, have you noticed, Joseph, you get to a second word, and I know you have a word, uh, but I also heard backs. Now, I'm going to give you a trade secret, up to you if you want to follow it or not, but 50-plus uh, years of ministry, listen to what I have to say. You have a backache? Will you demonstrate some faith? Well, how do I do that? Stand up and bend over. Come on. That's how you know you're healed. Faith without corresponding action is dead, dead. You had a word. Sid, I'm looking at you. I, I'm here today looking at you, a father in what God's called so many people to do, a beacon. I have a word for your partners. And the word is, as they're partnering with you, I see breakthroughs coming in their businesses. I see breakthroughs coming with chains of containment. I see breakthroughs coming in their destiny and vision. I see lost children suddenly getting a revelation. And I'm telling you, the seed that they've put into you and what they will put into you, there is coming a return and you can't bury seed. And there is a supernatural calling to many people, specifically over resources in dark times. I see provision in difficulty to those that are linked to you, to those that are linked to this broadcast, to those that are partnering with this ministry. I sense it so mightily in you. There is a supernatural provision because people don't even know the level of things you do for the body of Christ out there. And I'm telling you, this is hot ground with the Holy Spirit and he wants to break people out of their containment. And I sense more and more testimonies from this moment forward where people will begin to say, I've had a financial revolution not just a miracle, I've had a provisionary revolution. Something broke loose in my life. And I see a river of increase coming to open up even more avenues and floodgates for the message of its supernatural, the message of Sid Roth and the legacy media that will come out of this ministry. And your partners will benefit from it in the name Thank of you. Jesus. But there's something, something urgent I want you to benefit from this second. This second, instantly, there are many of you that watch me that have taken knowing Jesus for granted. Yeah. Your, your life insurance policy, if you will, to get to heaven. You haven't put any more than your little toe in the water. It's time for you to enter in. Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability and move rather than be stagnant. You see, when you're stagnant, you're, you're going backwards and you don't even know it. It's time to get unstuck. Yes. Repeat this prayer with me and mean it to the best of your ability. Out loud. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus died for every one of my sins. Thank you that Jesus died for every one of my sins. And because of his blood, I'm clean, and you remember my sins no more. And now that I'm clean, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior, but I make you my Lord, the Lord of everything. Now, unfortunately, we just run out of time. Join us immediately for our extended show at sidroth.org slash z. Joseph is going to demonstrate the greater glory and teach on recent visitations. I, we didn't get to it yet. On the angel of Israel and the angel of the United States. Without this revelation, your supernatural protection, blessings, and favor could be removed. For he himself is our peace, 
who has made both Jew and Gentile into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself. To create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Adin novi chlavyak. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. Do you feel as if God's not listening when you pray or speaking back to you? I've been there and so have all of my guests. That's why I want you to go to SidRoth.org slash prayer to access interviews with guests who have discovered how to pray unstoppable prayers. Learn about our free prayer app called God Talk and leave a prayer request so we can pray for you. It's more than time for your breakthrough. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 